Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Brent Peltola. I am the Executive Director of Partners in Research Canada, and um, I'm going to be the guest for uh, the host for our um, junior astronaut uh, presentation tonight. Our guest is Dr. Uh, Parshiti Patel. Um, Dr. Patel is the Educational and Outreach Communications Specialist with the Institute for Earth and Space Exploration, in addition to her role as adjunct research professor in the Faculty of Education at Western University. So I'm gonna turn over the presentation to Dr. Patel and um, we're gonna go from there. Welcome to our presentation. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to be here today talking about the Junior Astronaut Initiative. Um, it's an initiative by CSA that we um, here at Western are helping um, to promote and um, get engagement up um, throughout Canada. So, um, you know, I'm going to give you guys a bit of information about the um, the program, uh, but at the same time, kind of give you the background of how um, this program came into being, um, and at the same time, um, give you kind of um, a quick overview of the activities and one sample activity um, that you can do with your classroom. Uh, so uh, kind of the background, so Junior Astronauts in a uh, campaign was actually announced um, last earlier February, uh, early in this year, um, 2019. Um, and that was part of the uh, Lunar Gateway um, project in which Canada is actually uh, putting in $2 billion over the next 24 years. Um, and as part of the project, one of the, the aspects of the initiative and actually also as part of Canada's space strategy is to engage youth. So the Junior Astronaut Project um, is, is one of those initiatives that uh, the Canadian Space Agency is leading. Um, and how um, kind of the Lunar Gateway project came into being was that um, the NASA is planning Artemis mission. Um, it's a mission to uh, not only have a lunar gateway around um, the moon, which I'll, I'll um, talk about a bit in the next slide, um, but it's also one of the, uh, the, the key aspects of this project is to actually uh, have the first woman land on moon in in this next decade so that's really exciting um, and and the fact that we're now going back to the moon it's going to help us to get to Mars and so this is kind of a pit stop um, which we're going to be doing in, in our long-term goal um, however there are a lot of things that we can learn and test um, when we are on the um, on the uh, Lunar Gateway at the Moon. Um, so, what is the Lunar Gateway? So, it's uh, it's a miniature version of the International Space Station, which we currently have orbiting Earth. Um, and by miniature, I mean I don't mean like a very very small. It's still it's slightly smaller than the International Space Station. But the idea is that this is a uh, an observatory around the Moon that is going around the Moon. Uh, and, and it hosts a bunch of experiments uh, throughout the year. However, it's only going to be inhabited by humans uh, 30 to 90 days a year. So it is not like International Space Station where we have humans on there um, almost 24 seven throughout the year, um, but it, there will be kind of missions every year going to um, the Lunar Gateway. Um, and what uh, you know is really neat about this project is that even though humans won't be um, on the Lunar Gateway throughout the year, experiments will still be running on on the um, on the gateway as well as there will be you know a lot of missions down to the moon and back. Um, and so in order to bring this all together, obviously, NASA has done this with International Space Station and then they're doing the same thing with the Lunar Gateway where they're working with multiple um, space agencies to, to get this project going. Um, so as you see on this particular slide, there are a lot of modules that uh, NASA will be providing, but you can also see ESA is providing the uh, Orion service module. We also have JAXA, which is the Japanese space agency, um, as well as uh, we have the Roscosmos, which is the Russian space agency. Uh, the most neat part is that we are, we as a Canadian space agency are part of this mission and um, it is kind of playing it with our strengths. So, you know, International Space Station, we have contributed um, the, the Canada arm and, and that kind of gives us this ticket for, for Canadian astronauts to be going to the International Space Station. Um, this obviously 
us being part of this mission means that there will be a Canadian who will be at some point going to the Lunar Gateway and maybe to the moon. Um, so it's a very, very neat opportunity. And uh, something to kind of emphasize what we have been asked to do is, is to contribute another Canada arm. Um, it's going to be called Canada Arm 3 um, that's going to be on the Lunar Gateway. Um, and it's going to actually help and build um, the, the gateway, but also at the same time, we are also going to be providing the artificial intelligence to be running everything on the, on the gateway. Um, you can imagine if um, there are no astronauts on the space station or on the Lunar Gateway throughout the year, they will be needing the artificial intelligence to be um, running a lot of these experiments that are, uh, that are housed in there and that need to be continuously run throughout the year. So it's so a very neat opportunity for us to be, um, you know, a considered leaders in robotics, but at the same time, investing um, in, in Canadian companies, small business, uh, medium business, as well as large companies that have already um, been working in this industry. And so, you know, one of the major aspects of this mission um, is to involve um, and inspire the next generation. Because as you can imagine, this will, you know, start in the next decade, but last for a very long time. And as I said, it's going to be a pit stop for, for us to go to Mars. So um, we will definitely need uh, kind of the, the next and the future generations to, to ensure that we have, they have those STEM skills um, or the 21st century school, uh, skills to, to be part of these kinds of missions. Um, obviously, in addition to just inspiring the next generation, um, there are definitely unsolved mysteries about the moon. Um, that we would want to conduct while we are on the gateway or on the moon um, through the gateway. A um, couple of different other, um, you know, kind of goals for this project also involve exploration. Um, as I said, we will be, you know, moving to Mars um, after we have tested and worked um, and tried technologies on the moon. Um, there is definitely a, kind of a step in the direction of exploration, uh, not only just um, kind of in our solar system, but also in the galaxy. Um, and then last but not the least, um, economy is something people generally don't think about. Um, um, obviously, it's driving um, the economy here on Earth, because you can imagine, uh, you know, we, are, we have committed $2 million over the next 24 years, um, and a lot of that money goes to the, you know, companies here in Canada that are working towards, you know, um, whether it's AI or robotics that we are providing for this. Um, but at the same time, here on Earth, we are running out of a lot of resources that, you know, we have to look outward to, to, for those. And so in order to achieve those, we're definitely looking at Moon being one of those places where we can harvest water, if there is, to use for space missions, but also at the same time, any kind of uh, resources that we can use from the moon um, so that we don't have to carry it from Earth because it does cost a lot of money to be shipping water or, you know, uh, materials that could, could be built from, from things like Mars or Moon. So those are kind of like the overall um, reason why, you know, this the junior astronaut campaign came into being was, was because of this mission. Now that we are part of it, we definitely um, want to engage our current and next generation. So, um, you know, you can visit the junior astronaut website. I just put in a link here. Um, but if you go onto the website, there are a couple of different aspects to um, for the junior astronaut campaign. Um, one of them is um, there are a host of activities that um, they have provided for teachers and educators to use in classroom and I'll talk a bit about that. Uh, they have also, um, you know, come up um, with this um, awesome idea of when you do these things in classroom, um, they definitely want to give you a chance to either have an astronaut or a space expert visit um, once you do one of these activities. Um, and then if the students actually complete uh, one in each stream, which I'll show you in the next slide, um, they can actually put their name into a draw to attend a camp at the Canadian Space Agency headquarters. So um, it's kind of once in a lifetime opportunity um, I know as an astronomer, like I would die for an opportunity to like go and get trained like an astronaut. Um, and so the, the students, uh, the current students in grade six to nine would actually be able to, um, to apply and go to this, um, to this uh, space training camp um, at the Canadian Space Agency in the summer. 
So um, let me kind of show you um, what kind of streams are available and how you can actually um, register because it's free for anyone to do it. So they have um, based their activities on what they look um, or get the astronauts trained in. So obviously, in addition to having um, a background in science and technology, um, they definitely look for um, someone who is great at teamwork um, as well as communications. Um, and then they obviously get trained in um, kind of the fitness and nutrition part of, of their um, uh, you know, schedule or regime um, that they do for the astronauts. Uh, and, and, you know, all of these three different stream um, give students an idea of what it takes um, to be an astronaut. Um, definitely, you got to be fit if you want to go to space. You need to have food when you're up there, but obviously you need to look at um, kind of the healthy foods that you can have um, and how, uh, what kind of foods, you know, the other astronauts have been eating when, when they're on the International Space Station. Um, I, I, I found like some of my most favorite activities actually lie in teamwork and communications just because I enjoy that aspect of, of my job and in general, um, you know, kind of working with other people. Um, but this is a great activity um, for teachers to do in classrooms, especially, um, you know, if they are trying to build um, this uh, groups of different um, uh, diverse uh, kids and, and bringing them to do a lot of different projects. Um, and so science and technology ones as well, uh, kind of use it in, in your science curriculum. Um, but I'll give you an example of, of what they have on their website. So once you sign in, and I'll show you how to get registered, um, you have a host of science and technology um, uh, activities. One of the key things for, um, for students to remember is that if they want to be able to go to the camp um, or put their name in the draw for the camp, um, they will have to do one activity from each of these streams that I talked about in the last slide. Um, and um, I will show one, um, one, you know, one activity as an example, but you will see how um, they have laid it out and how easy it is for you to actually use those activities in the classroom. So uh, one thing to note that they have been um, they have, uh, before, even before you actually look inside the activities, you can actually gauge how much time it's going to take for you to conduct this activity by the same time if you need any materials or not. Um, they do realize that there are a lot of times that you don't have, um, you know, a lot of budget to, um, to assign to a certain activity. Um, so they have made sure that there's a whole spread of, um, activities that either require, uh, that don't require anything or, or sometimes require some material, but not a lot of them. So uh, some of these activities, um, for example, like some of my favorite activities out of the science and technology include the lunar resupply mission where the students are building and testing um, a lander um, that would, you know, deliver stuff, um, deliver payload to the moon. Um, also something um, to kind of talk about like the grade nine science would be a hovercraft launch would be where um, they will be constructing their own hovercraft and competing. You can make it a competition and compete against other uh, groups of students. Um, so the next one um, is the food and nutrition. There are tons of activities in food and nutrition um, compared to any of the other streams. Um, and so there's a host of them that you can pick. Um, uh, most of them um, don't require a lot of material, um, especially for the the uh, fitness one, um, but at the same time, uh, you know, are easy to, to conduct in a classroom. Um, so that one is the nutrition one right here. Uh, so a lot of these activities um, can either be done um, in one session or could be spread out, um, which is what I personally like, um, just because it allows, um, you know, for example, recording your meals. Uh, you could do it as a homework. Um, and then record their meals maybe over a week or two weeks and, and kind of come back to the activity, um, uh, you know, bring it together and, and talk about it. So, and you will see that a lot of these uh, in uh, just below the activities, they have curriculum alignment listed as well. So if you're looking for a particular, um, you know, for example, if you're teaching grade six science, then you can look and, and see which ones will actually work for your um, grade six science class. And then last but not the least is the teamwork uh, and communications. Uh, so this one um, is mostly, most of the activities require 
uh, students to work in groups. Um, but at the same time, um, obviously these don't have curriculum connections in there um, just because they're supposed to be either culminating activity and or uh, something that teacher would like to bring in the science, but at the same time research um, into their classrooms with the activities. Um, one thing I will note that for an educator to um, qualify or put their name in the draw for an astronaut or a space expert to visit, they only need to do one activity. So it could be one out of any of these streams. The moment you finish that, um, you will be able to um, enter yourself in the draw um, for the visit. So, um, you know, there are activities that range anywhere from 20 minutes to three hours. So you can pick whatever suits um, your, your time, um, as well as what kind of curriculum you're looking for um, to be able to qualify for this. Um, so to give you kind of just a brief overview of what the um, activity, you know, when you, when you go in and register, what does it actually look like? Um, so if you were to download Dragon's Den, which is one of the activities in teamwork and communications, um, they actually give you all the details you need. So kind of the preparation time, how much time it's going to take for you to get things ready, what kind of materials you need, the objectives of this particular activity. Um, as well as they give you kind of a tad bit of background. It depends on the activities. Some have really extended background that lasts one or two pages, um, and some have very um, you know short background with more appendix information. So you will see here in the Dragon's Den activity, there's a short background and gives you kind of the instruction on how to run that particular activity. Um, but then they give you a host of information in the appendix where you know they want you to kind of um, highlight these particular streams of panels that um, the students can pitch to. Um, so it's the Dragon's Den is exactly like it sounds. It's um, it's taken from the idea of the the show um, where they are pitching an idea to a panel, um, and you know they have to work together to come up with this um, innovation um, that they're pitching um, to one of these panels and and kind of um, have um, you know um, that experience of pitching. Um, having a great communication skills to put something to someone. Um, this activity we have done in the past in classroom, we love having students form uh, panels themselves. So they are not only the one actually pitching, but also at the same time being the ones who are uh, analyzing other people's pitches and, uh, you know, doing the rebuttal. But it's, it's up to you if you want to do it. But that's something that I found pretty interesting about this particular um, activity. Um, one thing through this program, what they really want to highlight is, uh, you know, the spread of activities that they have talk about, you know, fitness, nutrition, teamwork, communications, um, you know, the science and tech activities, all of them kind of highlight these different careers um, that people who work in the space domain have. Um, so for example, I'm personally, you know, I'm, I'm an astronomer and astrophysicist by training, uh, but we work with people who are mathematician, who are, um, you know, in geology, who are in um, biology, but at the same time, uh, a professional medical doctor. Um, so, you know, there are a host of these um, careers that they want to they want to promote to to make sure that they know that when there's an astronaut up in space, it's not one person. There are hundreds of people working on Earth behind that one astronaut that you are seeing who is doing experiments. There's, there's someone here responsible for their food, there's someone who's responsible for the schedule, uh, for the science experiments they are conducting, et cetera, et cetera. So they want to ensure that, uh, that students are aware of these uh, different um, uh, careers that they could have and still be part of this space, uh, space industry and space field. Um, so in terms of registering, so you can register it for free. So if you go to their website, you will see right on the top um, this uh, really yellow bright um, um, bar where you can click and register. Um, I have personally done it and, um, you know, it's a very simple form with uh, just the normal questions, name, um, kind of the school. Um, a lot of um, organizations that are just schools can also be part of this so you could have um, a group or elf amateur um, you know like your student club can, can be part of it amateur astronomers club can be part of it so you know based on your organizations you can list that um, and it's a very very short form to fill it out um, they do require um, 
up to 24 hours to uh, to get approved because uh, there is a person behind um, the scenes who is actually approving each of these um, as they come in. So it may take you around um, 12 to 4, 24 hours in order to get the approval once you have submitted the registration. But once you do, you do have access to all the activities um, and also uh, something I should mention is that they do, once you have access to the website, um, there is a map on the website where you can find um, other uh, organizations in your community or surrounding communities that are doing the same uh, same uh, astronaut campaign. Um, and the, the reason why they have that is because let's say you as an educator are just doing one activity in classroom um, and you don't plan to do any more, but students want to do more so that they can get those three activities um, to be able to put their name in the draw, then they can go to the website, they can look at uh, what other places in their area is actually doing uh, some of these activities like fitness and nutrition and um, let's say teamwork and communication, they can go to those events um, and still get the certificate of having done. Um, one of the other things which I was noticing today when I was up there is that when you go to the website and you know use one of the activities, you can come back and you know, say you have completed it and you can download a certificate that you can hand to each of your students who have completed it. Um, so when they are uh, putting in their name for the draw for um, the camp, um, all they need is that certificate from you that they have completed that activity. So that's, um, that's the neat part. Um, and I'll give you like a quick rundown of one of um, the activities that we conduct um, here on site here in London with a lot of classrooms um, and it's called the patch maker, patch maker, make me a patch. Um, this is a very interesting STEAM activity um, because it involves arts um, and I love um, having um, this activity as kind of a Kickstarter for the day if I'm doing an event. Um, so each of the astronauts, not sure if you have noticed, uh, when they're wearing the blue suit, they actually have um, on the left arm, um, they have an astronaut patch. So this is a patch um, that the astronaut themselves have designed. Um, and um, this uh, particular patch kind of uh, em uh, encompasses everything that particular um, astronaut wants to convey in their patch um, for that particular mission. Um, and so there are two different kinds of patches. There's the astronaut patch and a mission patch, and I'll show you what a mission patch looks like. Um, but in this particular activity, we ask the students to, uh, you know, put their name in there, put their space agency, like for example, the one that you see right here for David's um, patch, as well as a meaningful image. So, you know, have them imagine that if they were going to the moon or exploring Mars or any part of the universe, use the meaningful things that they are going to be doing and use that to represent um, that in your patch. Um, so for example, over here, we have the junior astronauts patch and you can see um, it talks about planting Canada's flag on the moon um, and you have a student who is the, the Canadian astronaut. Um, and so that kind of emphasizes on the fact that we're as lunar, we are part of the lunar gateway. We're going to have a Canadian land on the moon soon. And so um, I'll give you a quick um, overview of uh, David's patch. So in this particular patch, um, so David has used the, um, uh, the compass rose right here and the North Star um, because um, uh, he wants it, uh, this particular patch to highlight how we are guided explorers. So we are exploring the, the universe, but we are guided by the North Star, which is what North Star does here, here on earth. Um, then leading into the, this uh, North Star are the, the, this trail of four colors, which are actually pillars of innovation, where red is kind of the energy and passion you need, orange is the creativity, white is, symbolizes um, science, and blue symbolizes international collaboration, which is what the International Space Station is uh, part of. Um, obviously, he has um, Earth in the background because a lot of um, his mission um, to the International Space Station earlier this year uh, looked back on Earth. Um, so that's one of the aspects of his um, patch as well. Um, the four stars here actually represent the hundreds of crew members um, or are the members here on Earth that support the crew on the International Space Station um, and, uh, you know, kind of highlighting their contribution to, to this mission as well. 
So at this point, um, you know, I like to highlight other uh, patches that the uh, the astronauts have made in the past, and you see, uh, you know, uh, Chris Hatchfield's patch all, uh, has a Canada arm, as well as um, um, Dave Williams' patch as well. Um, they obviously both worked using Canada arm, so it, they kind of made sure that there was an emphasis of that. Um, and this is very neat because you know they get to bring in their passion um, into this particular patch. Um, so at this point, like we would ask the students to make their own patch using these three and, you know, kind of let the creativity flow, um, but then have them put in uh, groups to be able to make a mission patch. Um, so a mission patch actually highlights um, all the um, three astronauts, or generally it's three or four um, astronauts that go up to the International Space Station. Um, and, and their mission patch is something that they wear on, on their, um, just, just below the waist above the, the stomach. And um, in that it contains crew names, mission number, as well as a meaningful image of the mission. Um, and as you see in the mission 58 that uh, David was part of that, um, we, you know, again, has the North Star slash Compass Rose, um, has the International Space Station um, and the Earth as well. Uh, one of the things that I found that could be very interesting is that this mission patch could either be worked in groups, um, so you can divide the class into multiple groups and they can work in groups and make their own kind of mission patch and they decide on a mission that they're going. You can alternatively have a class patch. Basically, it's a mission as an entire class, what you have throughout the year, what you plan to achieve at the end of the year. Um, that could be a mission patch, so using what the goals are and, you know, um, the thinking about those and creating um, an artwork based on that. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of one of the sample activities. A lot of the activities involve a lot of, um, you know, building and creating things, which I think is very helpful for students, uh, whether or not, um, you know, they are, they're inclined in space. It, it would generate um, that enthusiasm towards uh, just thinking creatively. <laughs> um, Okay, so um, I already talked about the uh, the ex expedition patch, and um, at the end, you know, once they create their own mission patch, um, uh, if you are using Twitter, we would love to see those uh, patches that they make. Um, but at the same time, that could be something um, that they could use for their um, their video. So uh, the students, when they're putting their name in the draw. Um, to go to the camp, they will have to make a short video, one or two minute video um, of saying why they want to be that person going to the camp. So, you know, explaining their patches is one of the coolest things that they could do um, to showcase their passion for, for being the, the junior astronaut. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and take any questions that you might have. All right, thank you, uh, Dr. Patel. If you can just click your stop share button. Yes. There we go, perfect. Um, so I'll just remind uh, our webinar participants, if you have any questions, just open the Q&A window and uh, you can type them in and I'll relay those to uh, Dr. Patel. But I did have a few of my own. Um, the activities that you, you talked about, um, are they uh, grade specific or is there some direction about how to use them at different grade levels? Yeah, so there is um, an extension of their activities, basically uh, in the um, kind of the PDF that I showed you that has uh, how you can um, accommodate based on grades. So they obviously the camp is specific to grades six to nine, like I said. Um, however, they are, you know, I, I personally have used the activities anywhere from grade four to 12. Um, it just requires, uh, you know, for example, if I'm doing Dragon's Den with like a grade 12 class, it would definitely be something very research heavy uh, component that I would use. But if I'm doing it with like grade six, I would keep it like to, you know, um, minimal uh, in terms of, you know, how much research I would want them to do, how many details I would want uh, them to provide. And there are information, um, such, um, such information in the booklet as well that you can download on their website. Excellent. Um, I'm assuming that all of the activities are available in both official languages. Yes. So uh, some of the, so I know that um, the uh, activities are available, some of the extensions and or additional information that they are referring to either a video or they're referring to a website or a link 
that is sometimes available, not always in, in French. So, um, but you can definitely request CSA if, if that is a thing you would like to use. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, a little bit more about um, the kids in the classroom and their participation. Uh, you went over the, the teacher registration. Is there a student registration process as well if they want to advance and potentially go to the camp? Yeah, so something I should mention is also that for educators to um, get this visit in the classroom to do that one activity, the deadline for that is February 28th. Um, they will um, open um, the link to actually put your name in the draw January 9th. Um, and it's the same um, start date for students to put their uh, name in, in the draw as well. Um, it's just that their registration hasn't started yet. They will be able to register starting January 9th, um, but they could do these activities until um, March 29th. So, okay. so students have the deadline of March 29th, while teachers have deadline of um, you know, Mar uh, February 28th. And the reason for this is so that when they're, you know, they can at least do one activity by February, end of February, and then you still have time to do more activities by the end of March. Um, and, you know, in that way, they will be able to visit uh, the space experts and astronauts will be able to visit the classrooms, hopefully in March and April, um, before the whole summer rush of exams and everything starts uh, cropping up. Okay. Um, along that same line, then, when a student is registering, is there uh, some kind of a, a parent approval process? Yeah, so because this is obviously, uh, you know, students are under um, the age that they would require to register themselves, all of the students will have um, to have the parents um, legal or parents or legal guardian to sign it off. So they'll be the ones who will actually be registering them. Um, they do have an FAQ on their website in terms of what kind of details um, in their video they're planning to, um, you know, uh, ask for um, and what kind of information parents and legal guardians will have to fill out. Okay, there's a, definitely going to be a photo waiver and, you know, video waiver, just because when you're going to be at CSA, you're going to be photographed and, you know, videos will be taken. So, so they want to ensure that all the parents are checking those, those right. things. Um, you talked about a focus on uh, women and girls uh, with this mission and with the CSA in general. Um, is there any other focus? Is there um, other uh, groups that this is particularly aimed towards? Yeah, yeah so our mandate includes uh, not only girls, but also Indigenous youth and minorities as well. Um, so they want to in, uh, ensure that all three, all groups are involved, not just, you know, the girls. So um, we are definitely working with a lot of different organizations to ensure that the Indigenous youth are part of this, minorities are part of it. And so, so they want to see representation from all over Canada as well, uh, you know, not just, um, and just Ontario. So, so they do plan to pick two or three, um, you know, students from each province and territory to go to, to the camp. Excellent. Um, we will make sure that the uh, website for registering is tagged at the end of the recording, but uh, if you can just go over it quickly, uh, the website is where? Yeah, it's uh, it's on the CSA, um, so ASC uh, dash CSA. I'm actually going to pull it up on mine as well to ensure that I am actually, um, you know, using the correct because it's it is definitely a long um, website. Um, okay, so it's um, ASC dash CSA dot GC dot CA slash Junior Astronauts. All right, we'll make sure that um, we send out that link to everybody who registered for uh, today's webinar. This webinar is has been recorded and will get posted on our uh, website if you want to review it again. Um, and the link for the recording will get sent out to all registrants tomorrow morning. Uh, so you can look forward to receiving that in the uh, video posted on our website. So um, our next steps in the junior astronaut 
will be our first classroom session next week. So uh, what are we thinking about doing uh, So there? in that particular mission, we're going to have, or particular session, we're going to have um, Gavin, who is one of our graduate students. He's going to be talking about his research on the moon um, and about the, um, you know, more details about the Lunar Gateway and why we are doing it. And then leading into this uh, survivor moon activity, uh, which is one of the teamwork and communications activity. Um, so he's going to lead the class through that. Excellent. So teachers, we will be sending out registration information for that session um, in the next couple of days. So look forward to that. And we hope that um, on December 17th at 11 a.m. Eastern time, um, you will be able to join us. I know if you're in the West, that might be a bit of a challenge, but we have spread the sessions. We're doing 10 classroom sessions over the next uh, three months and we've split them between 11 a.m. Eastern and one o'clock Eastern so that uh, we can get good coverage across uh, all provinces. Um, so I think for tonight we are, we've been about 35 minutes, so we'll probably uh, cut it off there. Um, I want to thank uh, Dr. Patel for your time tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited about everyone taking part in this campaign. Excellent. Um, and again, if you, any teachers want to go to the website, if they want to reach out to partners in research, um, please go ahead and we will make sure that uh, we get the information to you. Um, hope you have had a good evening and we'll uh, talk again soon. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night.